All right, we're back. Actually made it to, fuck, this is uh, episode 14. Didn't think we'd keep up with it this much. Short attention span and all of that. Um, it's been a while since we did some recording. So um, one of the things that came out, and it's a little old now, but it's still worth bringing up, is when um, when that, uh, the, whatever the, that group of doctors in Texas um, were trying to claim that the hydrochloroquine that they can treat patients and the the main one is a complete wacko and if you read her background she thinks like there's like um, like devils screwing you in your dreams and like all this crazy stuff and of course, <laughs> our genius president uh, co-signs for her just because she's spouting off about the hydrochloroquine. Um, so it was, it was just, and, and, and then when, when, when they question him about it, he just like, he, he just gets like, he goes on his little fit and he walks away or whatever. But, um, but did you see that, that story? <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's hilarious for me because they've proven, like over and over again, that hydrochloroquine is not uh, Corona cure at all. These people are fucking whacked and stupid. <laughs> well, it's just it, in in certain cases they've proven that it's actually can be dangerous. So, um, you know. It's just amazing the 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 um just Jesus Christ! I, how much more misinformation are you going to spread? Spread? Look, look at look at the the damage that it's been done with the masks and not making you know uh, either a national mandate or at least uh, from the start you know pushing it. You know, even with studies that have shown that, and, and I don't know if you've read this, but there are studies that show that the, the, the whole purpose of wearing the mask supposedly is to protect other people, right? Well, there's studies that have shown that if you wear a mask and you get hit with the vapors or whatever, depending on the quality of the mask, it can actually filter out some of the virus so you might get a lesser dose and therefore helping you fight it and, and helping you survive. So turns out there's actually uh, a benefit for you wearing the mask to protect yourself as well, as well as for other people. So, but, but anyways, that, that leads me to this fucking, this Louis Gohmert guy. What a fucking asshole this guy is. He's one of those guys that um, he's from Texas and he has people working in his office and they, they kind of encourage you not to wear a mask because they want to be all hardos over there. And they actually disparage people who wear masks because they want to, they can work remotely, but they don't want to, they want to do it at home because they want to, um, they want to make it so, you know, to look like, oh, look, you can work. There's no problem. This isn't a problem here. So, um, so this asshole actually got the vid and he actually blamed it on the mask. If you could believe it, believe that he said, he basically said that somehow it must've gotten on the mask and that's how he got it. <laughs> Not that. He's got people all over his office with no masks, masks on, and which is what he used to do as well. I mean, can you believe this shit? Yeah. Oh, it's it's comical, man. Like these these tool bags do not get like how easy it is to wear a mask, and like the benefits of it. It's not a huge fucking deal. Like, yeah, it's a little uncomfortable when it's hot out to wear a fucking mask. 
or when you, or when you got when glasses, other option. when you got glasses on, it fogs. Yeah. But like the at the end of the day, like being a little uncomfortable and having a little mass mass crash is a lot better than being in a hospital room hooked up to a ventilator, like breathing through a machine. Like eh, I'll take I'll take the fucking sweaty mask. Well, so. Since you said that, um, remember, we talked about me fishing for a punch in the face um, for saying somebody about, you know, walking around with their fucking, their mask, with their schnoz all hanging out or whatever, which I still think is going to happen eventually. But, um, but this, this is actually, (laughs) this is actually happening. Um, Before we get into that, because I want to go over some of these mask incidents, because they're if you haven't heard some of them, they're fucking wild. But um, so I was reading this story. There's actually a, a Facebook group called the Freedom Freedom to Breathe Agency. Okay. And these assholes, a couple of the ladies that they make themselves little fake badges that they pin to their chest and everything that say F, what was it? FTBA. <laughs> and they, they act like they're like some legit federal agency. And they walked into, I, I don't know which store it was, I can't remember, but they, they basically, the, one of the employees asked them nicely, told them that, that the policies that they have to wear a mask. This lady whips out a paper and gives it to the girl. The girl's probably, she can't be more than 20 years old. And she's telling her that, that she's violating her rights and she can be sued personally, not even the store, her. She can, pers- she can be sued personally for infringing upon her rights as a citizen and all of this bullshit. So this is the level, the level of stupidity that these assholes are, are taking this to. It, it wasn't bad enough with their little stupid mass exempt cards. Now they're coming out with these fake documents telling people that they can be sued. The, the measures these people go to are unbelievable. Unfucking believable. And, and, and so, so when, when, th- when this stuff happens, right, we all remember Costco guy, right? Costco guy, he's not a sheep, blah, 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 all that bullshit, right? But the number of mask incidents that have occurred, and, and this is just, this is just the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. So just not too long ago, I don't know if you saw this. It, it, it was in New Jersey. I think it was at a Staples. The lady, an old lady with a fucking cane, tells the other lady, because she had the mask with her nose hanging out, so she said something to her. Now, this is an old lady looking out for herself, right? I don't know if she was rude. It really didn't say how she came across, but it didn't need to get to this. The fucking lady attacks her, throws her down, the old lady breaks her leg just because she asked her to wear the fucking mask properly. So, so, so that's one incident. I, and if you have any, jump in because I got a bunch here, okay? Th- they're unbelievable. Um, in California, ladies in a Verizon store, they tell her she got to wear a mask. So what does she do? fucking cops a squat and takes a piss in the Verizon store. She took a piss in the store. This is her statement. This is the type of person that you are that because the store tells you you should do something for the safety of others, you instead drop trial (coughs) and fucking proceed to do a little uh, uh, S&M show in front of everybody. Like, what the fuck? You have any yet? Because I, I got more. <laughs> um, well, it reminds me of the it reminds me of the incident at the food line um, here in Virginia where the guy said something to the other guy about uh, fucking wearing a mask and the dude told him to mind his business and then his wife went and stuck her, I guess, her hand in another guy's face and like basically got his bit off his finger what holy shit yeah (laughs) 
Wow. So an arguing over a mask turned into like someone losing a finger. So she le- she legit bit it that hard? Yeah, she bit his finger off. Well, I hope it wasn't his middle finger. Be hard flipping off people with a little nub. <laughs> it's out there like <laughs> People be like, what the fuck? What was that? <laughs> You're the one. <laughs> they get all mad like, fuck you, fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So I got another one for you. And, th- and this one isn't funny. This one, the guy actually in a Walmart down here in Florida, he, I guess he said something to the other guy. The guy pulls out a gun. The guy's like standing there with his daughter. Like who's who's young, and the guy whips out his gun at him, like to be a hard O. I don't know, whatever. But um, one of our favorite stores, Trader Joe's. Two fucking guys beat beat down the employee. They beat him down because they told him to, to wear a mask, in in, in New York. Um, Texas Dollar Store, the guy just goes like he just loses his shit. And I think he lost his shit more. um, It was more than the mask. He lost his shit because people started recording him. So he started going after like the people that were recording him and stuff. He, it was just a little pushing and stuff. I don't think he really did that much, but it was still funny to see. Um, What else? Uh, Oh, some, some, some uh, woman, she questioned the couple not wearing masks. Um, so they said, show me the law that says, that says it. <laughs> so this they didn't expect. She fucking whips out the mandate from the, from the state that shows she actually had it with her. <laughs> so I thought that one was kind of funny. Like, like I, I can, it didn't say, but I, I wonder what the response was after she whipped out the mandate. Like, show me the law. Show me the law. And then she goes, boop. She pulls it out. And it's like, what do you do if you're that guy now? Like, oh, okay. I guess I'll go get my mask. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, there was the, the tragic, tragic case in Michigan where the security guard asked somebody to wear, wear the mask. And he ended up getting shot to, de- to de- death. Um, here's another funny one. Uh, at a Dollar Tree. So funny how a lot of these are at like Dollar Trees and and Family Dollars and stuff like that. Because that's what I think that's where the the guy got shot at the Family Dollar. Um, some old guy at the Dollar Tree. Um, he <laughs> he's told he he should wear a mask. So he grabs the employee's shirt and proceeds to wipe his nose and mouth on the employee's <laughs> shirt. It just doesn't stop. And like I said, these are just the tip of the iceberg. Like there's tons more that I've missed, that you've missed, that that maybe didn't get any any viral pub that are happening every day. So I guess it's understandable for some of these employees to be like, I don't get paid enough for this shit. Like, I, I know we're supposed to enforce this mask thing, but I'm not about to get shot or fucking snotted on or pissed on over this. So fuck off. Like... Maybe the manager, maybe you're a little pay grade above me. You handle that shit. I'm not doing it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, look, I deal with the public all the time. Um, you know, our policy, you have to have a mask to enter the building. It's on our front door uh, with the governor's order. Um, I could tell you that I've had a couple incidents with people that have gotten mad and gotten upset. Uh, most recently, like, I had an incident with a dude who, Apparently, he had been there for some period of time. Um, our policy is, you know, if you're sitting down at a table, you're eating or drinking, you don't have to wear your mask. Um, if you're moving through the building or, like, going to the bathroom or whatever, if you're standing at the bar, order a drink, you have to wear a mask. So I, I confronted the guy and, you know, basically told him, like, hey, you need to have a mask on. He's like, well, I'm – and I was like, no, you need to go get your mask. Well, I don't have a mask. All right, well – I have one I'll provide to you. It's up front. You're welcome to go get it. And he continued to argue with me. 
And I was like, well, you're standing at the bar. They can't serve you until you get a mask. He said, well, I'm not here for service. So I lost my wallet. It's like, well, go get a mask and I'll help you find your wallet. Well, it's, <laughs> this dude just gets all pissed off, gets all flustered, and basically tells me to fuck off about the mask. And I was like, all right, well, have a nice evening. Can't help you find your wallet if you won't comply with what, you know, what the governor's order is. Yeah. So got, the guy goes outside, my super, talks to one of my security personnel. One of my security personnel was nice enough to find the mask, find his wallet for him and brought it to him. He ends up like Karen calling the business and asking to speak, to speak to the manager, not realizing that I was the manager. And I answered the phone. So I, I listened to his whole spiel about how much of a prick I was and how rude and like disunderstanding of his situation I was. And, and I was like, well, you know, did you notice the sign on the front door when you came in that said you had to comply with the governor's order for wearing a mask? And he said, yeah, but and I was like, okay, so you saw the sign. And I was like, and, um, you know, were you complying with that? And he said, no, but you know, I wasn't there to get anything to drink. I was like, but you were standing at the bar. And he's like, yeah, I was like, would it be a reasonable assumption by a health inspector who might be walking in that, you know, you're trying to order a drink because you were standing at the bar? He's like, yeah, but I was like, well, that's enough justification to get a mask, is it not? Yeah, but I was like, did you, were you not offered a mask? And he goes, yeah, I mean, he told me I could get a mask, but he was just a real dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes through this whole thing and I was like, well, I happen to be the manager that spoke to you and asked you to get a mask. And I'm sorry you didn't like that. <laughs> and he's like, well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> this is the only response he could have for me. Because <laughs> he didn't have any other legitimate, like, thing to say. And he Karen called and just happened to catch the guy that he was Karen calling about. I mean... What could you say? You just you prosecuted the shit out of him there. It's like you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my thing is, look, dude, it is the worst part for any employee in the business. Like, especially like if any, if you're going to a bar or a restaurant or anywhere in nightlife, like the last fucking thing we want to do is to make you not have a good time. The last thing we want to be is the party police or the mass police. Like, it sucks. But also, like, you understand that in order for us to operate, in order for us to stay open, like you have to comply with some shit. You gotta, you gotta follow some rules. Mm -hmm. So these are new rules to all of us. And, and yeah, they're uncomfortable and they're not that great. Like they don't lend for a great experience, but it is what it is. We're, we're all dealing with, you know, the world around us right now and just making the best out of the situation. Yeah, I get it. You don't have to explain to everybody why they should be wearing masks. <laughs> Oh, it's constantly. This is the I, this is the constant discussion I have now. Well, well, uh, understandably, and this is a constant discussion on this pod, and it's it's kind of getting stale. But I, I just wanted to bring up the the actual incidents because some of them are just so outrageous. Um, they, they're worth talking about. And, and and just before we close this topic out, um, speaking of servers, I read something about a server. Um, damn it, um, it's somewhere out in the Midwest, or probably more. I think it was, I want to say it was like Wyoming or Nebraska. So maybe even out West. Um, so uh, some, some lady, uh, uh, some server, the, she gets like a, a 10 cent tip or something like that. And the guy wrote on the fucking receipt, like uh, better tip, no mask, better tip or something like that, which is fucking just unbelievable. Like this person is wearing it because she's required to. She, she makes shit money because she's a, a waitress. So she depends on tips. And now you're going to use your little stupid political statement to now fuck her and not give her a tip. It's just fucking unbelievable, these guys. I, 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 I hope, I swear, I, 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 this is not hyperbole. I, I'm not saying this. This is not satire. This is me. Every night, you know how you say your prayers? And, you know, you, you, you bless mommy and daddy and you pray for aunt fucking Lucy and whoever. I pray every night that all these fuckers catch the vid. Every single one of them. Every single one. Because fuck them all. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. You want to make your own rules. You want to ignore science. Eat a bag, big bag of COVID dicks. And catch it and... 
I don't want you to die. I don't want you to, well, maybe somebody, I don't want you to die, but I want you to, 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 to wake the fuck up. And with that being said, unless you have something else, I'll move on. Um, there is a little, a little, little, little motorcycle rally that's going on in, in, in South Dakota. Or is it North Dakota? Where's Sturgis at? I don't even fucking know. North Dakota. All right, wherever the fuck Sturgis is, they got a shit ton of bikers there and they're all waving their little American flags like, hey, guess what, assholes? I'm drinking Bud Heavies and I'm just as American as you fucks. But just because I'm a mask doesn't mean that I'm un-American, you stupid cocksuckers. Anyways, they're over there and, and, and they're defying what – there isn't really any orders, so they're not really defying anything. They're just defying science because they're out there just with their noses and mouths and everything else out. And just because they got to drive their bikes and, you know, like the, like this, the South Park episode – you know, <laughs> yeah, but let's be honest. There are worse things than the COVID that you can catch at Sturgis. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, that's, that's a good I think point. that's why these guys. I think that's why these guys are like, oh, Corona. That's it. <laughs> so, some of the veterans. Ah, I got herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea. I got it all. That fucking Sturgis it didn't stop me. <laughs> you ever had crabs in your beard? <laughs> shake, shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh the burn the burn i tell you the last time i was there um it's just like i i i understand why the state wants to to keep doing it because it you know it affects a lot of businesses and the economy and stuff but man what why can't you do both why can't you go there and just wear a mask like knowing that the, this People are still denying this thing. Why are people still denying this after all these deaths, after all this this evidence? Why are people still denying this? I just don't get it. Uh, anyways, fuck the masks. Fuck the masks. But one more serious thing I want to talk about, because obviously with the reopening of the um, of the, the sports, right? Have you caught any NBA games at all? I know you don't yeah. watch watch a lot of sports, but they're on a lot now because they, they're showing them like every almost every day there's a game on. But in any case, whether you have or haven't, they have allowed them on the back of their jerseys to have something instead of their name. So although, no, their name is below the number now and they have whatever slogan they want on top of the number which I don't have a huge problem with. Um, but again, we get back to that same thing where we talk about, okay, well, what if somebody, like these things still have to be approved. So then it becomes, well, who's approving them and what side of the political spectrum do you lean on? You know, and then it just becomes this big thing. And, and the NBA of all people, with what they did in China, should just stay the fuck out of this stuff because they backed down when China told them they were going to shut the shit down and get the fuck out. They backed down with their tails between their legs. Okay. And the stuff that's going on in China is like, like the human rights violations that are going on in China are just on another level. And the NBA looks the other way because they want to grow their market there. So you do that but then you let the players put Black Lives Matter, enough, all these other education reform. I don't know. I've seen so many different slogans on the back of these, these jerseys, which once again, accomplishes nothing, accomplishes fucking nothing. It accomplishes nothing. And don't, don't give me that, well, it starts the conversation. No, it doesn't. It doesn't start any conversation. It's just, it, it's, it's just, uh, uh, Putting the lipstick on the it's pig. It's pandering. Yeah, it's definitely it's pandering. pandering. Yes. Yes. So I, while I don't have a problem with it, I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's, it's useful. I don't think it's effective. Like, 
because Gordon Hayward has education reform on the back of his fucking jersey. That means there's going to be education reform. That's going to make somebody think, hmm, you know, education kind of sucks. Maybe we should reform. Like, what are we doing? Because, because one of them has enough on the back of his jersey, the next time a racist cop or something is, is going to be like, think, you know what? I can't remember which player it was, but I'll just use Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart had enough on the back of his jersey. You know, maybe it's time. Maybe it's, maybe it's enough. Maybe I should just stop fucking killing, like, racial profiling or, 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 or cracking dudes in the fucking back of the head with my baton. Maybe I should stop doing that because Marcus Smart put enough on the back of his jersey. It really spoke to me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just saying it's not effective. I don't know. It's, the, it's not going to change anything. The, the, first time I, uh, the first time I see a try something else jersey, I'm over it. I'm, uh, I'm out of the game. Well, <laughs> I'm well, gonna lose if, my shit. What if what if <laughs> what if one of the players asked, "Can I put try something else?" What if one of the players said, "You know what? Fuck this. I support Trump. Fuck you guys. I want to put Trump 2020 on the back." Like, of course they're gonna tell him no, but is that fair? You're allowing all these other slogans and stuff to go on there, so it's just it's stupid. I go to sports to get away from that shit. Okay, I go to sports. To watch guys yeah. do something that on at a level that nobody else can do, and that's what makes it so fucking great, because I can watch these guys essentially play a game, but I don't want to minimize it because it's it's, it's very entertaining, and 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 it's something yeah. that I, I can't do. It's something that you can't do. It's something that most people can't do. That's why they get paid so much money. These guys do this on an elite level, and that's what I want to see. I don't want to see social issues. I don't want to see political issues. I don't want to see agendas in my sports. And you could say, well, what about the national anthem? The national anthem happens before the game, which nobody even really pays attention to anyways. And I, I stand up for the national anthem, but I understand why they started taking a knee. And it was done in a respectful manner, and it's not part of the game. When when I'm when I'm watching the basketball players and I see their jerseys with their fucking slogans on the back of their jerseys, it becomes part of the game. That's the difference. That's the big difference. So if if I was if I was against the Washington Redskins logo, the logos on their helmets, it's and on the middle of the field, it becomes part of the game. So that's where that's where the difference lies. So please sports, cut the shit. If you want to say we support Black Lives Matter, blah, 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 that's fine. I, I want you to do that. I want you to do that. But not, don't put it in the game. Keep it outside of the game or around the game. You know, don't put it in my face in the game because I'm trying to get away from that stuff. I'm trying to escape that. <sighs> well, and and ult and ultimately, they're 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 pandering to the NBA players, they're pandering to society. Like you want you want to prove that Black Lives Matter or that you support you know the Black Lives Matter movement or you know minorities in this country, then invest dollars, put yeah. your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Don't don't don't. I don't want to see your fucking slogan on the side of the court. Don't put it on the back of a jersey. Take the money you invested to put it on the back of those fucking jerseys and go into communities and do community programs. Fucking spend money where it matters. Fuck is that? Stupid. It's fucking stupid. It's a waste of time. It really is. It's ridiculous. Um, but I, let, let's move on to some of the other shit because that's too heavy, like usual. Um, so. <laughs> fucking stupid ass. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see some of the slogans, man, because there's a lot of them. And I see some of them, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? Anyways, um, so I went to, I don't know, Target or something. And um, as we're driving out, we notice these people 
No, actually, before that, I went to the super. Uh, before that even happened, I went to the supermarket, and I had grabbed a, a quick burger. Um, I grabbed a quick burger before I wanted to go in because you know when you go in on a on an empty stomach, you end up buying a bunch of shit that you're not that you wouldn't normally buy. So, um, so I stopped real quick in the parking lot to, yeah. to just, just crush this burger real quick, and while I'm sitting there. I see this this dude in a pickup just sitting in the parking lot waiting, and so all after I don't know about five minutes, this other dude drives up, and and he whips out like it looks like some type of contract or something like that, and I'm just like Jesus Christ, who does business in a fucking Win Dixie parking lot? Like <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it happens all the time, you know, like, well, I'll be in the neighborhood, you know, I'll meet, I can meet you here or there, but it's just so weird. It's, it's so weird to actually do like business like that, like in the Winn-Dixie <laughs> parking lot. Cause at first I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this is a drug deal. So I'm watching it cause that's what I'm used to seeing, um, you know, from back in the day. And no, it was, it was uh, probably, I don't know, some guy fucking, I don't know. I don't know what the hell they were doing. Maybe maybe the guy was meeting his his private investigator who was tailing his wife or something like that. And who knows? But but so that was one incident. And then a few days later, there was uh, another incident where I see a guy meeting a chick, and I, and I've seen this a few times. And it's just like like the the parking lot meetings happen a lot. Have you ever noticed any? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to think a safe way to like exchange like Facebook Marketplace shit, like all that kind of thing. So, I mean, you'll see that kind of shit. But uh, there's also the fucking like the cheating girlfriend, cheating boyfriend, yeah. fucking married guy who meets the fucking girl in the Walmart parking lot type shit. Like, like you know, drop one vehicle there. Yeah, or, or so, like back or, in my investigator days. <laughs> no, I was gonna say back in my investigator days. One time, I I watched a chick meet a guy at Giant, and uh, she told her husband she was going to get diapers. <laughs> and then I watched them fuck in the Giant parking lot. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, she got more than diapers. You fucking pervert. <laughs> That's so nasty, dude. Like you, the poor husband, you, you're out there, you're out there just, just getting all that sex all over you, and then and then you go home, and and and, and kiss your husband or or just like, ugh. like I, and how stupid the is he? The worst part is this, like, like she this she chick, comes home. This chick you know, he, never went into never what? Well, she almost fucked up. Like she she went to the store, never went in. Jumped into this guy's car. They fucked around and then left. About halfway home, she realized she forgot the diapers. So, That's funny. So she had to turn around and go back and go buy diapers. That's funny. That's funny. Like that would that would if she Imagine walked coming in, home with no diapers. <laughs> <laughs> but even even still, that's fucking gross, dude. Like, you know, she got dick breath and and she's just like, hi, hi, honey, I got the diapers. It's just. Acting like everything is just normal. Like, fucking gross, dude. Ugh. God damn it. Just fucking call it off. Um, anyways. So, yeah, there's a lot of people meeting in parking lots. And if you, if you just open your eyes, every time you go somewhere, every time you go to Walmart or Target or whatever big shopping center, you'll probably see it here and there. Um, that's where business gets done, and that's well, where... and here's the thing. It, here's well, here's how to see it too. Ne it's never in the front of the parking lot. Oh no! It's always on the side or on the back side of the parking lot. Oh yeah, way in the like, back. It's always on the side of the back side of the parking lot. Yeah, where there's nobody else around. Absolutely. Um, so you know, I watch a lot of TV and stuff, and so. I, I mean, I've noticed this before, but believe it or not, when I moved down here and I, and I changed my insurance, the insurance rate down here in Florida is actually more than what it is up north, which 
kind of struck me because you know my car is garage now and and before it was in an open parking lot and you know it's the city so you think that it would it would be more for up north but it's actually more here because i guess there's more accidents and shit like that so with my rates going up i started thinking i'm like man these motherfuckers are using this as an excuse but if these assholes stop spending so much money on commercials do you know how much lower our rates would probably be think about it i know you don't watch a lot of tv mr cord cutter or whatever the fuck but if, if you watch cable tv you can there's a insurance comp uh, insurance commercial for a different company on probably almost every commercial break it's fucking unbelievable how many insurance commercials there are so you know they spend millions and millions of dollars on advertising now let's just say they just stopped they just said you know what we don't need to do this this is a social social media age and we can get the word spread for us we're not going to invest any money in commercials anymore so that we can lower people's rates we'll give you the lower rate you spread the word doesn't that seem like the best way to go and you'll just stomp everybody Stomp the whole competition. I mean, if you run it right, because some of these insurance companies run their business better than others. There's no question about that. But if you run a legit good, um, you know, insurance company and you use that tactic, you think it wouldn't spread like wildfire on social media and people wouldn't be signing up left and right? I mean, even the fucking, the general is, is, is out there. This, the, the general is, is hiring Shaq and Snoop Dogg and stuff to get like the urban market who, who <laughs> you know, which uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the inner city folks, you know, have, have lower incomes, let their insurance lapse and they target them. So what do they do? They say, oh, well, they, they love Shaq. They love Snoop. Let's get them in, in our and let's get more shit going to the general. Well, fuck you, general. Of course. General's a white guy, just saying. <laughs> but the, the, the point is, if, if you just ran a the good funny thing is, I think the generals are like, like is my carrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, I have a Geico, so <laughs> Wait, who probably has one of the, one of the, mean, look, one so of the most commercials out there. So biggest advertising. Yeah. But at least, at least they have some some um, yeah, some I mean, amusing ones. Yeah, I mean, I think like it was their uh, there's flow. They have some amusing ones there's sometimes flow, too. There's Jake. Yep. Um, there's the the emu. Oh, that's so uh, that, that's so there's, stupid that one. That is so stupid that this is emu. Um, yeah, there's the 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 um. It's I, I think it's I think it's a different state. I farm. think my favorite. I think it's my favorite. I think my favorite's the calamity guy. Mayhem. The mayhem guy. Mayhem. Yeah. 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 The guy from Oz. <laughs> that's that's what I remember him from. Yeah, like let's. But those commercials are like worthwhile. Like they're they're kind of funny, like they're kind of real. Like, yeah, no, Geico I, Geico's funny sometimes. Yeah, no, I get that. And and there's nothing better than a, a well made commercial. But um, but if they use that budget to just cut people's rates and allowed social media to promote that. Like it's part of the deal. Like we're going to give you lower rates, but you got to fucking retweet us and you got to Facebook us and you got to Instagram us. And you got to do all of that shit. That's part of the deal. If you don't do it, then we're going to cut your fucking insurance off. Yeah. So, so that's the only thing. Like this is the deal. We're going to give you way lower rates than everybody else because we're not going to advertise. So you do the advertising for us and we'll pass those savings on to you. That's all. Fucking genius. Now that, let's start an insurance company. Let's go. Random Richards Insurance coming to you soon. 
that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you motherfuckers low ass rates, but you got to tweet your dicks off and Instagram pictures of your insurance policy and whatever. Win for you, win for us. No corny commercials, no none of that shit. We're going to pass the savings on to you. Random Richards Insurance coming soon. Um, so I was reading this story, and this is uh, nothing new, but it it's, um, I guess, going to new levels that have caused these two assholes to get arrested. So I guess these, these dudes called the Stokes Twins who do these viral YouTube videos. And these guys get paid. These guys get paid. You, if you get enough subscribers and, and views and all that shit, you get paid. So these assholes are always coming up with new ways to, you know, content. So I guess from what I read, they've been arrested. And they were staging a bank robbery unbeknownst to their Uber driver. And I guess the cops came and, you know, um, I guess they let them go the first time they did it. So these assholes turn around and they go and they do it again. And the driver's thinking this is like a legit bank robbery. And so the cops this time said, fuck off, we're arresting you. And they arrested these guys. And now they're facing like serious fucking (coughs) serious bids. (coughs) <coughs> and because of this stupid ass prank that, you know, makes them money. <clears throat> I don't know who these guys are because I'm not the little kid that watches this shit, but it's out of control. It's out of control. And I'm sure everybody's seen a YouTube video where some asshole does some stupid prank to somebody. And then when they're about to get punched in the face, you know, like, it's a prank. It's a prank. Why do these guys stop? Why do they not continue to punch them in the face? Just because they're saying it's a prank? Who gives a fuck? Like, you just, you, you just threw a bunch of shit on me, or like glitter, or, or you just fucking scared the shit out of me with some, some stupid shit. Like, like, you deserve a punch in the face. Why do they stop? Uh, the ones... <laughs> the ones, the ones that always trip me out is when they fuck in the hood, <clears throat> and you see like, like hood reactions. And I think one of the videos, like, dude actually pulled the gun out on him, started chasing them with the gun. Yeah, but who knows if that's even real? Like, these assholes yeah. are are staging everything these days, and and that leads me to this other thing where. I, I saw this story of this wedding proposal where they're on a boat and a guy leans down to do the whole proposal thing and the buddy throws him the ring, but he throws it so ridiculously like he, he tosses it instead of give it, handing it to him way over his head, goes in the water. Another one of the buddies jumps in the water like I don't know if that the whole thing was staged or if the friends did it as a, a prank to their buddy and the box was empty or whatever. Like you can't ever tell. So with with the, with TikTok blowing up the way it does and, and and all of these stupid YouTube pranks, like what's real and what's not? You know, like it, for me, I'm skeptical about everything now. I think everything is 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 staged and fixed and stuff. I'll admit some of it's funny. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm a fucking bitter, you know, crusty ass old guy, but it's, I always take it with a grain of salt because I'm like, well, eh, could be that that looks like staged. Somebody wants to go viral, you know, and it could be, it could be genuine. It could be genuine, but I can't even give them the benefit of the doubt because so many assholes are staging things trying to go viral. (sighs) Man, yeah, so I mean, you look at like the, the the cheating prank videos and shit like that, and how, some of that shit. How that's like I, I, way I, over the top. I don't think I've seen any of those. What happens in those? Oh, like so, like the dude will catch his girl cheating or whatever, 
and you'll see like the dude flip the fuck out. And she's like, no, baby, I was just playing. I was just playing. I'm like, mm. what catches her cheating? How? It always makes me wonder if it's legit, though. Like in like, like got- you know, she'll it'll catch. Like one, she caught the dude caught her with his friend or whatever, and they were like going on dates and shit. And she says she's just playing. Yeah, she's like, oh, it's just playing. It was all a prank. I knew you were watching. I don't know. I don't know about that. In fact, like, there's a there's a famous YouTube couple that that was one of the things that. Like, I guess they broke up for a period of time because of it. Well, you reap what you sow, you know. If you, it, it, what do they say? The boy who cried wolf. You know, if, if, if you prank that much, then where's the line? You know what I mean? Um, so fuck them. Hope they get COVID. Uh, um, so the, the new place, the, the new place that I, that I moved into when I first got here, the shower pressure was really shitty. Now, I don't know. Are you a shower pressure guy? Hello? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, my shower's got to be like on point. All right. So, so the, the shower pressure is like, I mean, it's not the worst I've ever had, but it wasn't great. It wasn't great. So one of the first things I did was I ordered um, a new shower head. And, you know, it had some decent reviews and everything. It was pretty cheap. So I said, eh, fuck it, let's, let's see, how, see how it goes. So I installed the shower head. And I don't know if you've ever seen the Seinfeld uh, episode where Kramer gets, like, this, this fucking super shower head that it just blows him like out of the fucking shower. <laughs> this is this is how it felt, dude. <laughs> it's like burning your skin because the water's coming at you so hard. It's like a sandblasting. I got like a facial peel, like just taking a shower. So so but you get used to it. It's like, oh word, now we got some like this is not going to be a speck of dirt on me after this. So, um, <laughs> unfortunately, there are uh, consequences to having that much pressure. And one of the things you don't want to do is expose your member to the brute force of it. You always need some type of little shield because I made that mistake. And I swear to God, it felt like I got my dick sawed off the way that shit was coming down at it. It was brutal, brutal. And, and I'm not exaggerating at all. The, <laughs> I think I, I let out a nice high-pitched scream. But <laughs> I, I screamed like a bitch when that shit hit me. Hit the sensitive parts. Um, so, yeah. So, shower pressure is a good thing, but just like everything else, too much too much of a good thing is probably not a good thing. I don't know. Um, so, that's my shower that's pressure funny. story. Uh, I was watching, I don't know, some movie, and they, uh, of course, they have, you know, a sex scene or whatever. And the chick, you know, they show maybe her ass or titties, whatever they show. And I was thinking, you know, all my life, it's kind of been like that. We always get to see titties and ass. And occasionally, Reg the nerds, we've got Bush. You know, we get to see a little sniz. Um, but the ladies never get that. Once in a while, you'll get a little penis here and there. But that's not fair. How come there's no nudity for the chicks? How come there's not wangs flopping all over the place in, in these nude scenes? Uh, I'll tell you that recently I saw a movie on Netflix. And because I've been like conditioned not to see the wang, 
like I'm watching the scene in this movie. And it's, uh, it's a movie called 365. I think you talked about this. And it's, yeah, like, and legitimately, like, he was like sucking. I him watched off or the something? stewardess like, yeah, like I watched the stewardess suck this dude off, but like you could definitely tell like his wang was in her mouth, and I was just like, oh wow, uh, wasn't expecting that. Like, and it was like you know, I've seen porn before, like it's whatever, but in that context, I wasn't expecting it, so it kind of threw me for a fucking loop. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that like these guys got to be walking around with you know. It's like the it's like, no, it's like but like the scene in Boogie Nights. Yeah. Yeah, with, you know what I'm saying like Mark Wahlberg's fake dick. But I, I'm I'm talking about like yeah, scenes like that, but like real ones. Like don't we all know that shit was enhanced, Mark, Marky Mark. We know you don't you're not packing like that. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Um, and I don't even know if if it was proven that 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 was an enhanced thing, but um, I'm sure it was. Anyways. Um, Prove me wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the point is, is that like, at least it's something for them to look at. Like women, you know, just the female version of us. They want to see some, some knobs, like let them see it. How come there's not more guys walking around with their dicks hanging out? You know, part of me thinks Oz was so successful because chicks were watching it because they wanted to see all that man meat. I don't know. I could be wrong, but fuck. Ladies gotta eat too. What's up with that? This is a fucking equal equal society. Let the ham hang. Free the ham. We talk about free the nipple. Free the ham. <laughs> oh shit. Um, I mean, of- honestly, though, I feel like a lot of it is it's because men are visual, women are not visual, and. That's why there's a lot of fucking TNA movies because men like TNA and women. That's not necessarily an essential thing. I think they were programmed. Not saying be... they don't enjoy it. Nah, but yeah, I, not I, saying that they don't enjoy it. I think they've been programmed to not only like not look for that, but to not express that they like it. So, um, I, I get where you're coming from, but I think there's just the, uh, they've been beaten into submission. You know, with the with the double standards of us guys, that that you know, it's like, oh, what are you like looking at dicks? What are you a fucking whore? Like, you know, like it's like, like what, what do you want? Or to, to like looking at pussies? Like, what? what like, uh, <laughs> but so, speaking of dicks, I saw a a advertisement for nuts dot com, and. I don't have much to say about this other than the fact that if you went to search for this website, I didn't do this because I was scared to, because you know, the internet is just a cesspool of vile shit. But if you went to search for nuts.com, how many ball bags do you think would pop up? More than I would care to see. Or do you think it would just go straight to nuts.com? I mean, I'm sure that would be like the first option, but I don't want to take... Is nuts.com like an actual like macadamia nuts, peanuts yeah. Yeah. Like site or, yeah. or is it just ball bags? No, no it's, it's, it's a legit site for different types of nuts. So, so I, I, I was just like, okay, that's great, but... Unfortunately, it's associated with something very disgusting, uh, necessary, but very disgusting, which God bless women, because I don't know how they go near our fucking bags. Our bags are fucking vile. Our bags are just like, God bless them, because not everybody is out there, you know, trimming them up and shaving them and and waxing them like these fucking porn stars are. I mean, I. I don't even want to look at my own, much less somebody else's. So, um, God bless women, especially the, the the nut lovers, the ones who show love to the boys. God bless you. I hope you never get COVID. I love you all. <laughs> I'll always keep the battery fresh for you. 
And and uh, additionally, his his tip: if you if you do want to purchase some nuts, just type in nuts.com. Don't search for it. Don't search for the URL. Don't search. Don't do image searches. Don't do image searches. Just go to nuts.com. Okay. Just type it in. Take the extra step. Um. Uh, so I was or, reading, buy, or buy from like Larry's Legumes or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Just go to the fucking store or or, or, or Amazon, Whole Foods, whatever. Um, so, so I was uh, I was reading a story about um, Burger King. So Burger King is supposedly trying to help the environment somehow by. Um, doing something with the cows to produce less methane or some bullshit like that. And I get it. It's more of a PR stunt than anything else, but (laughs) there are like beef farmers, like cow farmers and stuff who actually took it literally and were out there boycotting. I think this one was in Wyoming. I think the other one was in like Colorado or with the, with the waitress. I think this was in like Wyoming or something place where they produce a lot of beef and they, they they were protesting across from a Burger King, who's just a franchise who has nothing to do with like, you know, the the, the corporate uh, national. Yeah, it, this is just a franchisee. And they're all like, like, not boycotting, but protesting Burger King because of these commercials, because the methane that cows that out are like minuscule compared to all these other um, industries and stuff. Uh, for you know global warming and so they they got butthurt about it and they're protesting at this local burger king who has nothing to do with with the whole situation and it to the point where the owner of the franchise was out there chilling with them saying yeah you know hey like it's not my choice this is what what comes from 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 corporate like what do you want me to do so i i support you guys you know and it's just like it, it's it's it speaks to i guess this time that we live in how something as innocent this whole as, fucking cancel culture yeah. like mentality like, i understand like i understand their point but it wasn't like burger king was like blaming them you know what i mean they're just like <laughs> we're going to try and do this to make it a little bit better on our end and they took it as an insult. It's like everybody's got such sensitive, and and they'll be quick to talk about all oh, those liberals and this and that, and and those left wing nuts. But they're turning into just as much pussies in, in just a different way. Like you can't have it both ways. You want to be big tough guy, bronco rider, fucking cow rustler, whatever, and then you're gonna sit there and and piss and moan like a little bitch. Because because Burger King made a little commercial? Fuck off! You can't have it both ways. Tough guy. Go make me a fucking steak. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I love the beef guys. You guys are the best. I can't live without steak was, and burgers. Was, Keep doing what you're doing. I was, just having a convers- I was just having a conversation with someone about this the other day, about how, like, you know, there was a period of time when I grew up, like, if you like tried out for a team, you didn't make the team. Like, there was, a, you know, if you played a sport and you lost, you lost. Like, we didn't play games that didn't, like, they didn't keep score. We didn't, like, if you tried out for a team and you didn't make the team, you tried harder to make the team again next year. Like, that's the way it was. And now we live, like, in a society where, like, it's like, oh, you didn't make the team. It's okay because we're going to create a special team just for you. You know, oh, you know, oh, we're giving everyone trophies. Like, yeah. what the fuck are we trophies. teaching our kids? Yeah. yeah, like, what are we teaching our kids? What what kind of society are we creating? I, this actually started a long time ago where they there were rules that you had to play a kid for, you know, if he sucked, if he was the last guy on the bench. He had to at least play an inning if it was a baseball game or he had to at least go into the game for a couple snaps in football, whatever. Um, and, and I get that up to a certain point. 
when they're when they are super young and they're playing and it's not really you know they, they, these little kids are just out there to have fun you know they want to win but they don't care they really they they really just just, just having fun. In the game. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I get it in the lower levels, but once you once kids start to build that competitive edge, then you want to cut that shit out. I'm with you. Like no participation trophies. We're gonna teach you it because it it not only teaches you how to win, it teaches you how it not only teaches you how to lose, it teaches you how to win. You know, it teaches you to to not spike the ball in, in the other person's face. It teaches you to be able to walk up and and that's one of the great things about hockey. You can these guys beat the living piss out of each other, knock each other's teeth out, and at the end of the game, they still shake each other's hands. Now they might they might not like the person they're shaking their hand, but they still do it. They still do it. Yeah. I remember when when the Bruins lost, I forget which team it was, but Milan Lucic, man, he fucking grabbed that dude's hand and he was like, I'm going to fucking kill you next year. Like he, 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 but he still shook his hand. He shook his hand. And, and, and that is being lost also because nobody's learning how to deal with these things and these situations. And that's honestly why, if you want to talk about why so many kids, kids are soft and so many kids have all these, these, um, psychological problems and depression and all of this shit is because because of those things because people yeah. because they're not learning how to deal with these things so when once they face a little adversity forget about it they don't know what to do they don't know how to deal with it but I don't know I, I'm no psychiatrist I could be talking well, about well and that's well, well and that's the thing though, like if you think about it like all the all these valuable life lessons that they're missing out on, like that are setting them up because ultimately is that not what we want to do? Like do we want, do we not want to make our kids stronger? Like do we not want to make them more successful? Do we not want them to have like ambition and drive to be better? To handle pressure situations, to to yeah. I mean, just think about cancel culture like you brought up earlier. Um if you teach your kids some of these things like like, okay, who gives a fuck what that person thinks? If you teach these kids that, okay, I, now I'm not sitting here saying that bullying is good or that it should be tolerated, but if, if you taught your kids more to just say, eh, who, who gives a fuck what that dude says and not give a fuck? I mean, and I know this, there's extreme cases and there's different, so I'm, I'm not saying that this is the answer. I'm just saying if your kid had more of an attitude to where, they didn't care what other people said, then a lot of this shit would stop. Because what's one of the, I mean, when you get into a, a fight with your, with your, with your woman, what's the one thing they can't stand? It's when you fucking ignore them. When, when they're talking all this shit and it doesn't even affect you and you're just like, eh, whatever. It, because then they have no, they have no control. It's like they, they're trying to get, get, uh, an answer from you or they're trying to get a rise out of you and you just give them the me and you just don't pay any attention to them it pisses them off you know you're taking the power o away from them so in some instances and i'm not saying this is a blanket solution but in some instances if some of these kids would just do the same shit to you know some assholes calling them a fucking goofy fuck then they'd have less problems Instead of, well, and instead of, oh, I got to go report this to the principal that this dude called me a goofy fuck. Like, and, 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 and in some cases, the kid is a goofy fuck. So, so it's just accurate. <laughs> well, and, and on the same token, like, I, I think, like, I grew up that, like, you didn't start any shit. You didn't, like, actively look for a fight. But when there was a time for a fight and, like, you had to defend yourself or protect yourself or like someone was picking on you. Like you stood up for yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, but a lot of these days, a lot of these kids are punks and, and they don't fight you a fair one, you know, fair ones are, are almost like a thing of the past. All these kids do is fight in groups. It's ridiculous. But to your point, if more kids were willing to just fight a fair one, it would solve a lot more problems because then they just handle it and it's over. Like we did when we were kids, 
you know, and some people say about yeah, violence. You learn, you take your, you learn to take your lumps and you keep on fucking moving. And you get, you grow a little thick skin. Like, it, like, like I was saying with cancel culture, not only that, just, just if, if, if you don't like this podcast, if you don't like what we're saying, nobody's forcing you to listen to it. Take the mouse, click the little X. If it's on your phone, turn the fucking app off. It's that simple. Nobody's forcing you to do it. And you can do the same shit on television when you're watching shows and stuff like that. And I'll give you a perfect example. There's, I, I don't know what it's called, but there's some tranny show. Or there's probably multiple ones. I don't know. But if I'm flipping through the channels, it's not something that I, that I particularly want to watch. I don't have nothing against trannies. Trannies can have their own shows. They can live their lives. They can do whatever the fuck they want. I got nothing, no problems with trannies. Trannies want to serve in the military. Go for it. I know Trump stopped that shit, but <coughs> I'm with you. You want to get married? All, I have all the rights that everybody else has. I'm with you 100%. But I choose not to want to watch that. So I change the channel. It's that simple. Why, why, why is it like if I'm some, <clears throat> if I'm some far right dickhead who doesn't want to see that, why am I complaining about that? Just change the fucking channel. I, I, I don't get it. This is what people need to teach their kids. If you don't like something that somebody says, if you don't want to support them, fine. Don't support them. Don't watch their shows. Don't listen to their music. Don't, you don't have to fucking try to cancel somebody. If somebody makes a mistake and misspeaks about something, you don't have to try and cancel them. It's okay. Life's going to move on. There's going to uh, be... <laughs> there's there's going to be another cause. I think it goes... <clears throat> Go ahead. I think it goes back to NYOFB. And... A lot of people have that, you know, the not in my neighborhood buddy mentality. But it's as simple as mind your own fucking business. That's it. I, I, That's it. Like, I get... worry about yourself. Unless it directly affects you, leave it alone. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's a simplistic version of it. I, I mean, I, I would say you should still be aware of things that are going on, but. You know, like you said, things that don't affect you, who cares? Fuck it. Yeah. You know, or, or affect your family or affect your, your you know, the, 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 the core values or whatever. You know, um, it's like. <laughs> it's not your dick to suck, Jim. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not your dick to suck, Jim. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, so the, the, the Bible thumpers and stuff and, and people who, who don't want gays to get married and stuff, how does that really affect you? If you're good with God and you believe in all of that bullshit that – oh, I shouldn't say that. If you believe all of that stuff that you read in the Bible and you believe that it's a sin and, and, and all of that, um, fine. That's great. That's your beliefs. That's your faith. But just because somebody else doesn't believe that, that gives you the right to shut down the, the same rights that they deserve because, because of your faith. So now your faith is controlling, uh, is governing everyone because other people don't have the same faith as you. Other people don't have the same rules because all these different religions have all different rules. So... I'm sure they can understand that. You know, they, they're sitting there eating a big ass pork chop, or in some other religions, they say oh, you can't eat pork. Or, or in some or they're cutting into a big ass steak, and, and some religions say you can't you can't eat the steak. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and well, on, on the same token, their religions also say to love and accept each other, and to like pray for them and whatever. So it's a, it's a bunch of shit. Yeah, let's get out of that one. Moving on. <laughs> we don't want to. don't want to go down that hole. <laughs> Moving on. So we we've talked about um, a couple of <laughs> trannies and going down the wrong hole. <laughs> hey, listen, that, that came that from got you. Dark. That, no, 
That came from you. Trannies, you can put it down, put it in whatever hole you want. I don't give a fuck. I'm with you. All right? I just don't want to see it. Like, like I, I don't think that's saying the wrong thing. Um, so we, we've, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've been talking about, um, we've been talking about like burgers and stuff in, in past episodes. And it got me thinking um, because, you know, moving to Florida, uh, you got to find the new spots for your go-to, you know, takeout places. So, but, so obviously they have all the, the, the normal chains here. They've got your Domino's, your Pizza Hut's, your Papa John's. They've even got like Marco's and Hungry Howie's. Like they've got all these chains down here. Um, but that's exactly what they are, chains. So you got to find the places that actually make good pizza. But we're not here to talk about good pizza. We're here to talk about bad pizza. So I want to ask you what you consider to be the worst pizza. Chain-wise? I mean, anywhere. I don't care. I mean, most people would know the chains. Most people wouldn't know if you have a local place yeah, called I mean, fucking Joey's Pizza Shack and it sucks. Yeah, I mean, chain-wise, I'll, I'll say that Domino's is probably one of my least favorites. Well, like, chain-wise is probably worse than anything local anyways. I mean, you'd have to really suck at making pizza to be worse yeah. than, than some of these chains. And that's just facts. If you're worse than Domino's, you should close your business. You suck at making pizza. Because I am with you 100%. Domino's pizza is garbage garbage and i don't know how it's so popular i know it's because it's cheap and stuff like that but it is fucking shit but it, it wasn't always like that i don't remember domino's being as bad like growing up i we grew up on domino's and yeah but we were I don't kids remember the crust being as bad as it but we were kids what do we know we don't know anything about pizza kids love pizza you can give them you give them frozen pizza and, and they love it you 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 give a microwave shit, sloppy, soggy pizza, and they love it. I used to like the fucking pizza from the cafeteria, and it was all sloppy and everything. And and now it'd be gross, but back then it was it was fucking awesome because the cheese was all melty and everything. You know, well, it was almost, school. It was school almost pizza like a, was amazing. It was like a Sicilian <laughs> the, style the square pizza. Yeah, Sicilian style. So yeah, the square pizza. Sheesh. We were kids. We didn't know any better, but. I, I, I tend to agree with you. I, well, I actually do agree with you because I've been saying this for years and years. If you have any other option besides Domino's and you still order Domino's, you should probably get COVID. <laughs> Is it... Yeah, I mean, I like, I like Pizza Hut, but Pizza Hut's kind of pricey. Um, Papa John's is probably my like go-to. Like consistently, I like Papa John's. I avoid um, I avoid chains at all costs, but I'm not above them, so I, I'm with you. If worst came to worst, I would probably do a Papa John's or a Pizza Hut, but Domino's is like last resort. It's the only thing that's open, um, and even still, I probably just try to get like the cheesy bread and some wings or. Or some shit like that. But even those have fallen off. Those aren't even as good as they used to be. They've shrunk. Yeah. They're tiny. They're dry. Yeah, little... It's just not the same. Uh, surprising, like, like for me is um, Little Caesars. Sneaky, yes. S some of their products are sneaky tasty. I, I agree. I agree. But it's still shit pizza, if we're being honest. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it's it's shitty cheap pizza, but their thickness of their crust on their square, like their square pizzas, yeah. fucking really good. <laughs> well, cheesy, it, like crunchy on the outside. Not only that, they actually put some some decent spice on it. So, I, I I think it's because they mix Munster cheese in it, and it's a little bit different. So, um, 
I, I'm with you. I, I don't hate it. I, I'm not above it. Definitely not above it. But all I can say is, is I would probably, if I tell you Domino's is my last resort, I would probably, like after looking through the fridge, probably 10, 15 times, after looking through the cupboards, um, maybe I got like peanut butter and jelly, but no bread or something like that. Um, eh. Yeah, probably after about 30 to 45 minutes of, of dealing with that torment of trying to find something, I would break down and I would buy something from them. And it still wouldn't be pizza. Like I said, it would be like cheesy bread and wings or, or the little chicken tender things that they have or whatever. No, it's yeah. I mean, I think the best thing Domino's got going for them is their steak and cheese pizza. Otherwise, everything else is kind of the. I can't even. I just can't. I gave up on them years um, ago. Uh, around around here, there's a place that everyone raves about. It's called Benny Vitale's. And Benny Vitale's is known for, like, their big-ass slice of pizza. Like, they make this, what they call the Virginia slice. And it's a huge slice of pizza so that you fold in half. Um, everyone raves about them, and I feel like such a dickhead because I want to support them. <laughs> it's really not that good. It was just like, I've had better pizza. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, well, I'm glad you brought that up because that it's always – Go ahead. Right. Like, it's always greasy as fuck. Like, it's just not that good. Like, everyone raves, and I'm just like, yeah, it's dripping with fucking grease. I feel like the ingredients are cheap in it. Well, like, that's a, that's a sign. Supposedly, if the, if the, gre- if there's a ton of grease, then it's cheap cheese. So, I don't know. Um, but since you bring that up, I'll tell you why they like it so much. They like it because it's big. And they perceive value as, like, good. And that's not true. Because you and I went through this way back when we used to work at the airport. And we used to order from that place Al Capone's, where they had those humongous 20-inch subs. Now, for those that don't, and this this place shut down, because the subs were garbage. But... Everybody wanted to get subs from them because they were 20-inch subs. You basically got two subs for the price of one. And you could eat twice, maybe three times, depending on how much you ate. And for like seven bucks. <laughs> yeah, for like seven, eight dollars, depending on the type of sub you got. I'm talking even steak and cheeses. But the ingredients were low grade bottom barrel like they went to price right and that's where they got their cold cuts or it, like but not just price right like price right about to expire cold cuts like it was just disgusting it was horrible they used like the fake cheese they didn't even use like real like american cheese it was like that shit that comes in the cellophane like that's that says like pasteurized processed cheese food like just straight trash the, ingredients. The steak for the steak and cheese was like the trimmings of the steak that had all the fatty, gristly uh, parts. Yeah, with veins <laughs> and cartilage and shit in it. It was the worst shit ever. And people actually were going to this place and they were excited about it because they had the huge subs. And my whole thing was always, well, who gives a fuck if it sucks? If it sucks, I don't want to eat more of it. So what the fuck are we doing here? So... Yeah, yeah, we ordered there all the time. All yeah, the, the, time. The, the airport, everybody, big ass orders. And it's like, and, and, I, and I said, what the fuck are you guys doing? So my thing is, I would rather have less of something that I enjoy versus a whole bunch more of something that sucks ass and I don't even really want to eat. Like, what the fuck is the point of that? It makes no sense to me, but that, so you get so you get two shitty meals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 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 people equate value with good, and it's just not the case. So because you give me a huge slice, and it only costs me the same as what you know another place place I have to pay for like two slices for. 
I would rather pay the two for the two slices if the quality is way better. Like it's just, no. and and that's that's a big reason why Domino's has the following they do because they're selling pizzas for like seven bucks, and where are you gonna get a pizza for seven bucks? You gotta pay at least double that for any decent pizza, you know that size. The funny the funny thing to me like about that though is someone being in the restaurant business, pizza's cheap as fuck. Like it really is. Like it's probably one of the most the the least expensive like dishes to serve in a restaurant so like a pizza place probably has the lowest overhead out of any restaurant or like you're gonna open so for some of the places to charge as much as they do for pizzas is insulting as well yeah i mean i i guess but in in some cases like up in boston like you had like say for example the upper crust really good pizza really good pizza and and it actually is a small chain but in some of their locations, the rent that they pay for some of these spots is bananas, you know, and, and they do pay a premium for quality cheese and quality pepperoni and things like that. So there are, you know, added value to spending that some do it just based on their name, you know, like I hear what you're saying. Some, some just, well, we, we got a good following. Um, I mean, look at, look at Uno's. Like Uno's, Uno's went out of business. Why? I mean, the pizza wasn't bad. It's the pricing on their pizza. Like, why should it cost sixty bucks for two people to go get fucking a pizza? Uno's went out of business. There was still yeah. one. There was still one in um, in Revere before I left Massachusetts, and in Swarm Scott. I don't think they went out of business. Maybe some franchises did, uh, but they're still yeah. around. But I hear what you're saying. But I mean, yeah, but I guess getting back to the point, like my thing is I'd rather have quality than quantity. And so, for example, when you go to a restaurant and you sit down for your meal and they give you a big ass fucking plate so much so that you have enough to take home for another little snack or another, even another meal in some cases, um, or you can go to a restaurant and probably pay around the same price, but they give you less, but it tastes way better and you only get one meal out of it. I would rather do that because even when you get that, that less than great meal to take home, after you warm it up and shit, it's even, like, even worse. It's even worse off afterwards. So, so yeah, so that's just how I, that's just how I feel about it. It's just like, fucking give me the the good meal. I'll pay the same price or a little bit more. And you can have your big fancy, not even fancy, your big shitty, (laughs) your big shitty, shitty ingredient meal and have two of them. And you'd be happy with, because you got two shitty meals versus my one good meal. That, that's just my thoughts on it. But um, I know we took a left from the whole pizza thing, but I think that was pretty established what was the shit pizza. So um, you see me drinking all these different beers, case in point. <laughs> um and I, I'm not like one of those uh, beer snobs, the, the, the craft beer guys that are like, that. oh, I, I just have to taste it and I need the hops and I, I, I need a good IPA because I fucking hate IPAs. I don't, I don't get you guys that love IPAs. Those things, that bitter bullshit have fun with it, man, because that's just not on my... Give me a, a something that's easy to drink that doesn't fill me up. Like, like I, lo- I like Sam Adams, but they fill, they're fill they a little filling. Heineken's definitely filling. They're hard to, like, drink with meals and stuff like that. So that's why I, I, I fuck with the stupid, shitty lights and, and stuff because, they, you know, they're, they're easy to drink. And and I'm not drinking beer for the, for the you know, the, the sweet aroma and the, the fucking fl- 
floral notes of this or that. Get the fuck out of here. Like, I, I don't, I don't fuck with that. I, I drink beer to just sometimes get a nice little buzz, but for the most part, I just like just having some beers. Um, so that I guess Bud's going to make a Bud Zero, which like, I guess is non-alcoholic or some shit like that. Like, what the fuck is the point of that? I, I mean, well, I mean, uh, it's no different than the Heineken Zeros or the Old Duels. I remember, I remember before I could drink, like being in the bowling alley with my older friends <laughs> and drinking Old Duels, like I was like some big shot. Like, <laughs> well, well, uh, to this I say your older friends are assholes because they should have smuggled you a a, a regular beer, um, but. I just don't see any point in drinking these things. And mind you, I don't um, think the taste of beer is like the best. Like, uh, I'm just being honest. I, the, the taste of a Coke or some juice or something is obviously better than the taste of a beer. But I also don't mind it. And I, I, I guess you just kind of grow accustomed to it. And, um, And it's like, that's why you see me drinking all these different beers, because I don't stick to one because I like different flavors. It's like, I don't know if 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 you're the type of guy who likes to just drink orange juice every day. Good for you. You know, and and if you like the same beer every day, good for you also. But I like variety. Uh, I like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't like all the same bullshit. So I switch all these beers and I can appreciate, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm not drinking no fucking Bud Zero. Fuck off. Get out of my face with that shit. What the fuck is the point of that? Bud Zero, my balls. Like, that. Bud Zero can get COVID right now, and nobody, like, before it even starts. Fuck you, Bud Zero. I don't think there's much else to say. Like, if, if, if you're in a, a situation where you can't drink or you're not supposed to drink, then just have a fucking Pepsi. Get, don't drink a fucking Bud Zero. Just, just fuck off. Um, so that's funny too because Bud, like Bud, Bud has a, a reputation like for making all these weird beers, like the Bud Lemonade. Have you seen that? I've seen them like with the. I tried. I think the Bud Light Orange, um, which you can which like, tastes like asshole. No, you can tolerate it's it for like good. one one beer. Um, it's just like it's orange rhyme. It's not good. I, you know, it's not like it's not like Blue Moon with a nice like piece of orange like on the side. You know what I'm saying? See, see I and and I have the unpopular, uh, once again, the unpopular opinion where I can't stand Blue Moon. I don't know what it is about it. Um, it's I don't know if it, it, I don't know if it's a wheat beer. I, I don't really know that much about it, but it's just got a little funk to it that I just can't fuck with, and. I always say, if you got to put any types of fruit in your beer, then it's probably not that good a beer. You know, like I, I will, I will say this. Um, it's true what they say about light penetrating and ch- changing a beer's flavor, uh, and, and it's quite evident in uh, Stella. Stella bottles suck, but if you get Stella from the tap or in a can. It tastes better. Corona, garbage. If you get it in a can or a tap, it tastes better. Um, And one of my favorites, um, uh, the fuck, now I'm forgetting the name. It's, um, god damn it, it'll come back to me. But I, I I don't get it that much because they only really sell it in bottles around where I am. And, um, uh, uh, Newcastle, Newcastle Brown Ale. That shit, I like it, but it's not the same when you get the, it in those clear bottles because the light just changes the flavor. So if you can get it in the little, isn't that, like that's an, is that an IPA though? No, it's not. It's not at all. No, it's, <clears throat> it's a, uh, it's kind of a brownish type, Newcastle Brown Ale, but um, it's, it's got like an orange label. It's, it's good shit, but when you get it in the in like the six packs of the bottles that they sell, it's not the same. If you get it in a keg, like 
if you get it on draft, it's fucking phenomenal. Um, so that there is, you know, that aspect of, of the beer. Um, but for some reason, <clears throat> and, and this is funny, now that we're talking about this, I'm going to just dive in a little more. Um, growing up where we grew up, you know, inner city, whatever, you s- tend to start drinking at a young age with your boys, drinking 40s out in, in the park or whatever, on the corner, under the bridge, wherever the fuck you're drinking, you're drinking some 40s. And um, <clears throat> for those that don't know, who didn't have to struggle through this and had, you know, fake IDs or whatever, a lot of times we would just wait for the kind of bummy dude outside the liquor store to buy us our shit. Um, <clears throat> or we'd pay our older, uh, our friend's older brother, who might or might not have been on some substances, to we paid him extra to buy us our shit. <clears throat> but, um, we were brought up thinking like the only things to drink were Heineken's and Corona's because in the hood, that's all everybody drinks. Oh, besides the forties, obviously forties, you know, old English, St. Ives, crazy horse, um, all those fucked up malt liquors, uh, Colt 45, like everybody would drink those. But if you bought like bulk beer, it was, it, it was Corona's or Heineken's. And And what I was saying applies to Heineken earlier because the same with Corona's. The green bottle doesn't protect it from the light, so Heineken cans are way better than Heineken bottles. Um, I'm not a fan of Heineken in general. Well, yeah, no, I understand that. It's it's got a it's got it's it's got its own flavor, so uh, I could take it or leave it, but I'd leave it if it was bottles. Um, But that's what we so growing up, just you know that's what like the normal was. So that's all you ever bought. And it wasn't until I got older that I said, why am I buying this shit? It doesn't even taste good. And I started experiencing other beers that actually taste good. Um, but I, uh, that's a side story. I, I don't know why it still exists to this day, by the way, like there's still people out there buying Heineken's and Corona's just because that's all they've ever known. And they, they don't even really dabble in other beers. It's just, you know, it's like this is this is what I was brought up on. This is what it is. I think, it's, I think their hood marketing is better than the other brands. It's it's possible. No, but see, Corona's done much better. Um, well, I guess Heineken tried to be high end, but um, with their with their marketing recently. But I don't. I mean, they're not going to thumb their nose at selling in the hood you know what i mean like they're both trying to it's they're both trying to fill a higher demographic or a wider demographic but they're not going to turn away the hood because the hood probably gives them more business than the fucking than the demographic they're looking for which is crazy because it's funny go ahead uh, I, like, I don't know if you caught the the shit that heineken caught with their their light beer they, no, got, well, they, there was a big controversy around light because they released a commercial and the bartender slides a Heineken light down the bar past like several black patrons that are at the bar and it slides all the way down to like the white patron on the end and it says sometimes lighter is better uh, <laughs> there was this big fucking controversy over it <laughs> because they were like you know <laughs> And and I'm sure it was perfectly innocent, but the the watchdogs are out in full force, and they just want to just jump on anything. See, for me, like if you think that way when you see that, you're the fucking racist, because they obviously didn't mean that. It, it, well, I mean, not only that though, but like Germany, Germany's really funny about that kind of shit because. They like Volkswagen caught the same shit for a commercial they had, where like they flicked the they flicked the black patron into like a bar that was near the car. <laughs> like Volkswagen caught a bunch of controversy like about it because there was some black dude walking by the street and I guess he got too close to the Volkswagen, so you, you see this hand like just flick the dude into the bar. So it's like eh. 
So it would have made a difference if it was a white dude? Like, you, you see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but uh, I'm just saying that in German advertising, it's not uncommon for them to be a little bit racist. Eh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm a, a, an optimist, and, and maybe, maybe I'm, I, I'm not coming from, from that um, avenue. I don't see what other people see. Maybe I'm just naive, and I'm not, I haven't walked that walk. So I can admit that, you know, maybe, and, and you got to, and, and even I think some, some black folks will agree that some people are oversensitive and look for shit to, you know, scream racism. Um, yeah. But, but that's a whole nother thing. Like, I, whatever, we, we don't need to really talk about that. If if it, if that was their intention, they're assholes. Um, if it was just a, a, a you know honest mistake, then let's not kill them over it. Jesus Christ! Um, so I was watching, I was watching this show that shows like uh, I forget what it's called, but they show like stuff that happens in the courtrooms and um, you know like exchanges or whatever. And <laughs> it's something else sometimes because some of the stuff these dudes say and, and some of the violence, man, this, this lawyer took a punch to the face and, and kind of shook it off. He didn't even press charges against the guy. But, um, but one thing I noticed was, so the, the criminal or, well, I guess I, I forget what he was accused of, but he was basically, he basically told the judge to fuck off and the judge, and he walked away or whatever. And the judge was like, Oh, he's lucky. I didn't hold him in contempt or, or whatever it was. And the guy proceeds to come back. And, and I think this was like a, a zoom meeting type thing because you know, that's how they have to do it now. So the guy comes back yeah. and, and doubles down <laughs> Gives her the finger, tells her to fuck off again. She holds him in contempt and gives him like an extra 30 days in jail. And the guy walks away. Then he comes back a third time to talk more shit. And she ends up giving him 90 days in jail. So, uh, of course, wifey agrees with the judge. And I'm just like, I... I feel like oh, his big mistake was he threatened the judge. He said, like, if he sees her outside, like, he'll smack the shit out of her or something. I don't remember what exact words were. But so my feeling is, as long as you don't threaten a judge, you should be able to tell a judge to eat a hundred bags of donkey dicks. Because I don't think it's fair. It, like, where's the free speech? Like, I understand if it's being disruptive and he continues to do it over and over again, then you have to do something. But if he tells you to fuck off and go eat a bag of dicks, well, what is that really doing? Like the judge should just be like, all right, well then, you know, I'm not going to give you any of the benefit of doubt. I'm going to hand you this standard sentence or whatever, and you can go eat a bag of dicks in jail. Like what's wrong with that? Why can't, why can't somebody be like, Hey judge, fuck off. It's it's your freedom of speech. Like I I I, I mean I, I, I think I think the court <laughs> I think the I think the court has a right to like expect some kind of decorum. It's no different than like when you were a kid you couldn't run around the fucking school and flip the teachers off and, No, I, I agree. You know. I I I'm, I'm if you if it's excessive then yes. But if somebody's like, like put yourself in that position and I'm using some shitty public defender and he's doing nothing for me and I caught a bad break on this case. I, I might not even be like fully guilty or, or there might be extenuating circumstances and the judge is giving me no breaks. I should be able to tell the judge, well, go fuck yourself before I leave and go back to my sentence before they... Like, because 
Like that's bullshit. Like, like well, I'm not hurting the judge. I'm not hurting the proceedings. As as long as it's at, maybe at the end or maybe one. Like eh, it should be maybe give him the two strikes rule. Three strikes you're out. You you fuck me off once. You fuck me off twice. I'll let it go. You fuck me off a third time. Goodbye. Then I'll give you the extra thirty days. But like there should be a little leniency there because. The justice system is fucked. If you don't have money and you're using these public defenders who don't give a fuck about you, you you are screwed, screwed, and like you should be able to tell you should be able to flip off a judge and tell them to eat a dick once in a while. That's all I'm saying. Like judges should have thicker skin. They should be like, all right, whatever, get the fuck out of here, bailiff, get his ass out of here. You know, I'm not gonna eat a dick, but you can. Have fun. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Oh, I mean, I think when the judge gave him 90 extra days in jail, I think that's what she said to him. Yeah, plenty of time to eat a dick, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that's excessive, dude. She just, like, tripled his fucking sentence just for being an asshole. I mean, come on. Like... <laughs> I mean, but here's my thing. Here's Look, you know there's a certain way you should behave in a courtroom. If you behave like an asshole in the courtroom and the judge says, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to give you an extra 90 days for it. And shame on you. You shouldn't be an idiot. Yeah, but Shut isn't the that fuck a, up. Isn't that abusing, like, it is not abusing your power? Like we're getting on all these cops for abusing these powers. No, oh, it's, abusing their power it's, it's like not abuse of power. It's, it's not abuse of power because there's an expectation that you're going to behave a certain way within a courthouse, within a courtroom. Yeah, but what if you're getting fucked? What if you have an asshole... Public defender. Like, what, what, if, what if you're legit telling the truth and it wasn't you or it wasn't your fault, it was some a- other asshole and nobody's listening to you? Like, I, I got to be there and be yeah, Mr. Mr. Choir your... Boy? If I'm getting railroaded, I got to be no, Mr. That's when Choir you... Boy? That's when you take it up procedurally. You do it the right way. You don't fucking... <laughs> Shit, man. Right. That doesn't work. Because, because... No, because... Because what is what is saying fuck you to the judge going to help your cause? If you're getting railroaded, well, fuck you, fuck you, I'm getting fucked here. Okay, uh, the judge is like, all right, well, you don't have any respect. Obviously, your character is such that I would lead to believe that you might be a fucking criminal. So fuck off, 90 days in jail. No, it gives you the satisfaction of telling a judge to eat a bag of dicks. That's all. You walk out of there. You're still pissed off at your situation. Well, if you're, you're, if you're, you're still, that guy that ate that bag of dicks. Like, no, no, no. Hold on. You're still in the same situation, but at least you got to vent a little bit. It's like that guy that called you about you being an asshole and making him wear a mask. No matter what happened, he got that fuck off on you or whatever the hell he said to you. So he felt just a little bit better telling you to fuck yourself. It, you, you just get a little tiny, tiny bit of relief by telling somebody to fuck off. That's all I'm saying. Give them that. Let them get that little tiny bit of steam out and say, fuck you, judge, or go fuck your mother. I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, <laughs> again, I'm probably in the minority on this. Um, and, and I'm not a criminal. I don't want people to think I'm this fucking I'm this criminal or this thug or anything like that. I, I'm just, it's just, I don't know. Uh, I've probably been there, you know, maybe when I was a little younger. But, but that's neither here nor there. Let's, let's, um, so I'm flipping through the channels and I see there's this show. Now, mind you, I have not watched one minute of this show, but I've heard about it. And it's called Dr. Pimple Popper. And apparently, these people that are on the show have massive, like, I don't know if they're zits, cysts. I don't know what the fuck they are, but they're disgusting from what I've heard. And it led me to think, why would you watch this stuff? And, 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 and it's not just the pimple, like, well, I don't want to get into all the other shit. So let, let, let's just focus on this. 
what what kind of a person likes to watch somebody pop pimples explain that to me would you like to watch that well and it's no and it's and it's a weird fucking thing um like i think i was flipping through one time and i saw one episode and i stopped for a second and it was legitimate like some chick who had a black head that like had been behind her ear this fucking thing was like this big it looked like a hole in her head and it had been there for like 40 or 50 years god damn and, like for 50 years you got like a hole in your head and when they popped it it was like this big ass black blob of shit. i was like oh oh that sounds so disgusting like that that's my point why would you want to see that why? I, I don't understand that. I, I don't I don't get the mentality behind that. I I might I might be interested in seeing the lead up to it to like, oh shit, look at this fucking thing on this freak's fucking <laughs> on this freak's look. face or neck or, or, or ass or whatever. But to actually see them do like ugh. Oh my god, imagine Well and and as someone who like I suffer from cysts from time to time and I've had to like have surgery and have them removed. It is not pleasant, does not smell nice, it is fucking gross. Like it's it's unpleasant. Like ugh. I, I'm I'm sh- I mean I don't know if they do cysts on there. It's called Dr. Pimple Popper, but I just assume that they did. Um but like popping a small pimple is gross to watch somebody else pop a small pimple is gross but we're talking about like extreme situations here and imagine you were sitting there eating like a cream puff or something when <laughs> sitting there enjoying a, a nice little eclair <laughs> and, and somebody flips it on Dr. Pimple <laughs> I mean it, it's just uh, too, it's just too worst. far it's too far <laughs> so if you watch oh. Doc, Dr. Pimple Popper you are a sick fuck you have some uh deep-rooted issues <laughs> if you like it go for it i don't want you to get covid it's not that serious no, but... and, and, and i've heard and i've heard like people talk about their significant others like have this like obsession with popping their pimples on their back and stuff like that like what the fuck is that that's so fucking yeah, crazy like... hey babe I think that's like that, that's a primitive. No, I think that's I think that's a primitive trait that women might still have. It goes back to our like monkey ancestor type shit about grooming. <laughs> but even even the dudes like fucking monkeys. But even the dudes like, hey babe. I got some monsters on my back. You want to take care of those for me? Like, like what, what, what are we doing? Like, gross. Go see a doctor, bro. Get some fucking pills for that. Like, what the fuck? Well, and I've seen those, like, those giant, like, cis videos on Facebook and shit like that, where they, like, they lance the dude shit in the kitchen and just, Ugh. it's like cottage cheese coming out of his back. It's like, ah! It's making me gross right now just thinking about it. I I, I can almost not drink <laughs> drink a sip of beer. Almost. Uh, so th- before we we finish, I, I I saw firsthand today what a the return of sports and these little sports bubbles, the problem with it. So in case you didn't notice. So the Bruins were supposed to start the playoffs today. So I was all psyched, dude. Playoff hockey, let's fucking go. I went and got myself some wings. Got myself some beers. I was ready to go. Playoffs, baby. I go flip it on the channel. 
it's still the fucking previous game because these cocksuckers went to five overtimes. Five. The Lightning and the Blue Jackets. So normally you would be like, all right, so whatever. They'll just start afterwards or, or they actually start playing because they're in a different arena. Well, all these assholes are up in Toronto in the same fucking arena. So they couldn't start. And then there's a game scheduled for after the Bruins game. So instead of just making everybody start late, they postponed the Bruins game till tomorrow morning. So now I got a fucking 11 o'clock Bruins game versus like, like what am I going to be fucking eating a tuna sandwich while I'm watching this game? Like I was ready. I had the wings. I, I had the whole vibe. I was playoff ready. Let's fucking go. And now, and now I'm going to be eating fucking. <laughs> now, you're drinking, now you're drinking days. <laughs> Their drinking day starts at 11 a.m. Yeah. You gotta start with mimosas. Or I'll, be fucking, I'll be toasted by <laughs> mimosas by, and Bruins. By five o'clock, I'll be I'll be done. <laughs> it's a good example to set for my son. Just passed out on the couch, like ah, oh, fucking Bruins lost. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was very disappointing. Very very disappointing. Um, so there's that. But whatever. Um, uh, what what do you think of what do you think of the uh, the uh, cardboard cutout fans in a lot of the stadiums? Um, I'm 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 not a huge fan of them, but it doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really affect it. The funny, the best thing about them, the best thing about the cardboard fans is when they put them in the outfield, because when the home runs come and they smash right into them, that's the best thing. Because it's like I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you the players beforehand probably have like a pool like a, if you hit this one or you hit that one you get like certain amounts of money because <laughs> that's what i would do if i was a player like look at that old fuck over there in right field if you hit that cocksucker with the goofy fucking face then you know it's a hundred or whatever i'm sure they have their little bounties so but i mean that's nothing compared to the, what the NBA does is fucking is, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool, but it's kind of weird at the same time. So like they actually make it feel like it's a home game, I guess in, in baseball, it is a home game, but you don't get, you know, you just get the pumped yeah. in crowd noise. The NBA does the crowd noise, but they also have like live streams set up. So they have like legit fans watching on you know on screens and then they they mm -hmm. they'll do like all of the uh home shit like you know defense and all of that stuff so if you're the home team you get all the sound effects you get all that extra shit to make it feel like it's a little more normal um i don't know how much that really affects anything but it certainly probably helps more than some fucking cardboard dickhead you know <laughs> You know, just like, just plopped it. Well, my thing, my thing about the cardboard cutouts is I think they should, like, they, you should be able to take whatever picture for those cutouts. Like, as long as they're, as long as they're not, like, new nudity, fucking make them as funny as possible. I yeah. think then they would be great. Yeah, I guess as long as it's not. And, and, I mean, I, I don't. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Like, who is somebody? Really, but you know, these days somebody gets offended about it, anything. If some asshole just does the little nose thing where he puts up his nose or something, then some some other asshole is gonna complain about it. And it, it's no, it's nobody can have any fun anymore. Nobody can make fun of anything. Nobody can fucking. You can't even scratch your balls in fucking public. Somebody somebody will say you're, you're sexually harassing them. It's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking bananas. I'm like, just, I, I just think it would be hilarious to put yourself in every single stadium. That would be cool. That's a good idea. We should try to do that. You and me. Random Richards in every fucking stadium. Cardboard cutout. <laughs> just be like, like us shooting the guns at each other. Like. Uh, that would be something. That would be something. I, I doubt that they would let us do that, but <laughs> I'll look into it. Uh, anything else? No. 
All right. All right. We'll catch you next week. Later.